you've got that ideal career in mind, well, West Georgia Technical College specializes in preparing you for great careers. Call today and find out how we can help you fit education into your busy lifestyle. You've got that ideal career in mind. Well, West Georgia Technical College specializes in preparing you for great careers. Call today and find out how we can help you fit education into your busy lifestyle. I'm Perrin Alford, Provost at West Georgia Technical College. Thanks for watching Technically Speaking. This morning we'll be talking to Ms. Robin Knott. Ms. Knott is our medical assisting instructor at the college and we'll be right back. <music> Welcome to Technically Speaking. I'm Perrin Alford, the Provost of West Georgia Technical College. I'm located here on the LaGrange campus. This morning I want to talk to you about several things. One, we have Miss Robin Knott here with us. Uh, Robin is our medical assisting instructor at the college. Um, so she's going to tell us all about medical assisting, what it's about, uh, how you get into it, what the job market looks like. Uh, how much money that uh, you could expect to receive as an entry-level salary. So we're going to learn a lot about medical <laughs> assisting this morning. Also, I want to remind all of our listening viewers, uh, not listening viewers, they would be watching, watching wouldn't they? Viewers, uh, yes. Folks who are watching this morning, that fall semester begins very, very soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Late registration is August 9th, mm -hmm. and classes begin August 13th. Now. What does that mean to you uh, watching uh, this morning? That means that one, you still have time to apply for classes at West Georgia Tech. You still have time to apply for your classes at West Georgia Tech. So if you're one of those folks that is out there watching this morning that is unemployed, underemployed, uh, you might have had a job for many, many years that you just don't like. You know, sometimes that happens in our careers. So. Uh, if you're in a position that uh, you know deep down in, in your, your gut that you need some more training to move to the next level to perhaps uh, become a supervisor, uh, you might want to uh, take on more responsibilities uh, in the office, Wh whatever the case might be, West Georgia Technical College fits right into all of those scenarios. Uh, proven fact beyond any uh, uh, doubt at this point that the more you learn, the more you earn. So uh, I want to stress again one more time, fall semester is coming up very, very quickly. Uh, late registration is August 9th. Classes begin August 13th. Now, very easy to apply and get accepted at West Georgia Tech. You have to do a couple things. You have to uh, uh, go to the admissions office. You have to Fill out an application. You have to give us a one-time $25 application fee. You have to also take a placement test at the college. And then lastly, you're going to have to get us copies of all your high school transcripts and all of your college tra uh, uh, transcripts. And the reason you, you especially the, the uh, college transcripts are important because our admissions counselors evaluate those transcripts and if you have coursework that will transfer in to the college obviously we want to do that so that you're not required to take courses mm -hmm. that you've already taken uh, mm -hmm. you might have taken English or math or a psych or a world history whatever the case may be uh, we need those college transcripts sent to us so that we can evaluate them and get you uh, your credits so anyway August 9th late registration, August 13th, first day of class. Please, please, if you're out there and you're one of those that's unemployed, underemployed, just don't like what you're doing, need some more skills training to move up into your current job, West Georgia Tech has all those answers for you. Also, still plenty of financial aid at West Georgia Technical College. Uh, there's been some changes to the HOPE grant over the last year or so. Uh, but still, 85 plus percent of all your tuition 
is going to be paid for with the uh, HOPE grant. There's also the Pell grant is still available. That's a needs-based uh, uh, grant. So uh, if, you, if you're one of those who's not earning very much money at all, Pell grant is going to pay a large part of your college uh, tuition books fees. So HOPE grant is still out there if you're a Georgia resident. Pell Grant is still out there going strong. We also have loans. Uh, let me briefly talk about VAs. Uh, we have a, a VA person that will work with you at West Georgia Tech. So if you're one of those that is uh, served in the military and is back in uh, one of our five county service uh, area locations, uh, LaGrange, Newnan, Carrollton, Douglasville, and uh, Waco, Georgia, uh, if you're watching this program and you uh, have been in the service, need to call us because those benefits might very well pay for everything, tuition books, everything. So a lot of financial aid out there. So I just want to perhaps clear up some misconceptions that might be out there that uh, because of the HOPE grant, there's uh, still not a great financial package available to you at West Georgia Tech. That's, that's just not true. So. Uh, Fall semester is coming up very, very quickly and have a wonderful opportunity for those folks who just have this, this gut feeling that need to get in health care. And if you're one of those that's out there watching, that is a fantastic idea, I might add. Uh, all the statistics point to that with the graying of America, more and more uh, people are living longer. So that, that uh, generation of folks who will need health care is expanding dramatically. Well, if that's a demographic that's expanding dramatically, we're going to need doctors, nurses, CNAs, mm -hmm. phlebotomists, medical assistants, everything, everything dealing with uh, mm -hmm. health care. So that leads me right into Ms. <laughs> Robin Knott, who is our medical assisting uh, instructor at the college. Yes. So, Robin, we always start with uh, if a student were to walk in your office and have never met you, uh, Tell them a little bit about Robin, what your background is, how you ended up doing what you're doing today, how you were drawn to a medical profession, because I suspect most folks, or a lot of the folks watching, are going to be mm -hmm. in kind of a sim similar situation mm -hmm. and might want to make the same decision you made. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about Robin. About me. Uh, I'm a certified medical assistant through the American Association of Medical Assistants, um, which is also one of our accrediting agencies for medical assisting. I've been in the medical field for about 35 years. Wow. Before I started teaching. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, uh, and worked from everywhere from large hospitals to very small hospitals. Uh, so I've had a taste of a lot of different things. Uh, and I always multitasked, and that's part of what a medical assistant does. Uh, I live in Carrollton, so I do travel every day to work, which I feel is more a dedication because I really do love, mm. and, and Larry Grange is growing on me <laughs> every day. It grows there a little bit more right. on me every the day. Grange is a great place. It is, it really is. Uh, I had never you know, been here before I actually right. came from this to this job. Uh, I am a product of this program that I am teaching. Okay. So I did graduate from West Georgia Tech. Okay. Um, well, it was West Central, at the right. Waco campus at that time, but since the merger. Right. Uh, so I feel like I'm also giving back as an alum and okay. to the community what what they gave me in an education because I did need the financial aid when right. I went to school. Right. So I feel like I'm giving back uh, in training new people okay. to become medical assistants so that I can give back to the community that gave to me. Okay, now, now I'm assuming that you got trained at West Central. Yes, at West at, Central. In those days. <laughs> yes. And so you uh, got trained and then you went immediately into the field? No, I was actually in the field before that for the 35, for almost 30 years before that. Wow. Um, I was a respiratory therapist before that, a pulmonary tech before that. Uh, mostly dealing with heart and lung situations yeah. was really, so I did a lot of emergency room work, heart attacks or any right. kind of breathing problems, a lot of that kind of work. And then I got into um, wanting to get out of a hospital, uh, which is, you know, like I always say, I didn't want to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. I never really wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to be somebody that was giving and caring, but the hospital work really does weigh down on some people, mm -hmm. and it weighed down on is me. Is it a little bit stressful to work in it's hospitals? Very, it can be very stressful. I mean, you right. can imagine an emergency room, right. uh, car wrecks, oh, yeah. or you know, things that come in, and it's not only the patient you get involved with, it's the patient's family. Mm -hmm. 
So that's where, you know, after a couple of years, there is a burnout for some medical people. So we kind of start shifting into other areas. And that's kind of what happened to me. I started shifting into um, not wanting to be on call. Mm -hmm. um, I had been, you know, married for a while. We'd settled down and, you know, life goes on. I needed to take care of my family a right. little bit more. Right. So I wanted to get out of working nights and being on call. So I wanted to work in doctor's offices, which is great. Because, mm -hmm. you know, this is one of my selling points for medical assisting. We don't work weekends, <laughs> unless your doctor's office is open. Right. Uh, we don't work holidays. We only work daylight hours. Right. So we can be home in the evening. Right. So this, th this would be a great job. Uh, it's a great job for young mothers. It's a great go. job for older women that have high school kids because mm -hmm. they can be home when their children get home from school. Right. They're home at the dinner table every evening right. or on holidays when the kids are off. So it really is a great job and it can lead to other jobs. We have a lot of that go from medical assisting into practical nursing, licensed practical nursing or to RN programs right. or even radiology or any other kind of program. So that's kind of where I wanted to go. And so how long have you been at West Georgia Tech? I've been here well, actually since the merger. Uh, okay. I, I was an adjunct, what they call an adjunct, which is a part-time teacher at the Waco campus okay. with West Central. And uh, when this campus, when we took medical assisting and when the campuses merged, um, we needed somebody to kind of boost our program a little bit and right. somebody that maybe understood because we got new certifications when we joined. Right. Right. So. Uh, our, my program chair, Jamie Shell, she had decided, you know, maybe I could get somebody that already knew the program. Right. So she kind of pushed me this direction. Right. And, and so I'm assuming you were at Tanner? Is that where you worked? I did you work at Carol? Tanner. I worked at Tanner Occupational Health, actually, for about right. five or six years before that, which was also a medical assisting dream <laughs> right. because everything they did in occupational health, which is a short-term emergency room, you know, finger cuts or we assist the doctors, so we help with surgeries. We can do a lot of things in occupational health. Physicals are, right. are a dream for a medical assistant. And so in your career, how many years have you spent directly in medical related? 30, every, I mean, 35, 30 something years. So your entire time since My entire you, you life has been medical. Been, <laughs> Yes. So, so obviously you have found something about the medical career that you really, oh, really yes. like. So yes. if someone is watching this program this morning and is sitting there drinking the coffee or whatever, what would you say as a wake-up call, why should they choose a medical career? A lot of times, a lot of people find when they become caregivers, when their parents age or they have an ill child, uh, they find that little bug that says, you know, I think this is a rewarding and it's giving you a, your sense of pride in a way because you're able to help somebody. You know, I tell my medical assistants, even, even in a doctor's office, you can hold somebody's life in your hand, literally. I mean, you give them the wrong medication, we give injections. Right. You give them the wrong thing. You know, or you can help them by giving them the right thing, but there's also the possibility, you know, because nobody's perfect, that you can also do the wrong thing. Right. So we do hold somebody's life in our hand. And that's a very rewarding thing to have somebody come in when, when we call them from the, from the uh, lobby or waiting area and they're going, oh, I just feel awful, I feel bad, I just, I, you know, I right. just, I haven't slept in days. And, and when they can leave feeling better than when they came in, right. that gives me or gives a medical assistant the sense of pride that we can do something to help mankind, to that's help right. other so, people. So you, it's a profession that you really can at the end of the day say, hey, I changed somebody's life. I changed life. somebody's life, yes. That's, and that's wonderful. And that's wonder yeah, it's a wonderful feeling for anybody. Um, I get students that have low self-esteem that when they leave, I mean, they're smiling, they're right. happy, they right. have achieved something in their life. Yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome. Uh, as we go to break here, I uh, want to remind the folks, we're talking to Robin Knott about medical <laughs> assisting, but I, I also want to remind the folks before we go to break that fall semester is coming up really quickly. Mm -hmm. August 13th classes begin. So if you're watching this morning, unemployed, underemployed, hate what you're doing, got to make a life change, <laughs> West Georgia Technical College is the answer for you. Greatest, lowest tuition of anywhere mm -hmm. around. We are still the best bargain in education hands down. Fantastic staff, as Miss Robin <laughs> Knott is a great example here this morning. Uh, we want to help you change your life, but you have to take the first step. You've got to call us at 706-845-4323. If you can't get us that way, you can always get us 24-7 
at our webpage. That's uh, www.westgatech.edu. So www.westgatech.edu. So give us a call, go on the webpage, do something, take that first critical step, contact us and let us help you uh, get your future plans all in order where you can get a job you love, maybe earn a little bit more money. So uh, we'll be right back after we uh, take this short break to continue our chat with Miss Robin Knott. You've got that ideal career in mind. Well, West Georgia Technical College specializes in preparing you for great careers. Call today and find out how we can help you fit education into your busy lifestyle. Will Brader was looking for a customer service representative. And just through local communication and networking, we found out about the Troop County Works website. So we go online and it was easy to process our posting and register Willibrator to the website. And then we posted this job for customer service representative and received many, many talented applicants that we were able to choose from. And so as a result, we were able to hire local talent to our company and it's just worked out great so far. You've got that ideal career in mind. Well, West Georgia Technical College specializes in preparing you for great careers. Call today and find out how we can help you fit education into your busy lifestyle. I'm Perrin Alford, Provost at West Georgia Technical College. Uh, this morning we're talking to Robin Knott and Miss Robin is our medical assisting instructor uh, at the college. So let's get into a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of this All thing. Right. Uh, if someone were to come in your office again, I always love using this example. Pretend I'm just a student <laughs> and I have all of these questions. One of the questions I would ask is, uh, uh, tell me about your program. How long is it uh, if I you know, go, and I don't even know mm -hmm. what a full load is anymore. Uh, I don't know if it's three classes, mm -hmm. four classes. Since we've gone from quarters to, to semesters. semesters, we're all trying to learn all the, mm -hmm. the little nuances of mm -hmm. all this. But uh, I'm a new student. Tell me about your program. How long is it? What all does it entail? Uh, okay. Do we have a clinical experience with it? All those mm -hmm. kind of things. Okay. Uh, we, we are a selective process program. That's the first thing I have to tell students. And what does that mean? Which means you have to apply to our program. Okay. That means you want to become a medical assistant. Uh, so there are prerequisite classes, which means there are about eight classes that you need to take before you can even apply to become a medical assistant. And those eight classes can, and now that we're in semesters, those eight classes can really be done in two semesters. It's a little bit too much for one. Eight, you know, eight's right. a lot for one. Yes. But they can be done in two. Right. Um, we usually have people take four to five classes in a semester, so two is very easily done. And so what would these little pre or entry level courses be? Can you give us they some examples? They would be an, like anatomy and physiology. Okay. And that is what exactly for these folks um, watching? Anatomy and physiology, we're talking about uh, the body in general, right. you know, what the head is, so the eyes is, the nose. You have the to learn the muscular system, the, the muscular, skeletal system. The skeletal system, system okay. our uh, it, um, stomach, our, the whole thing, the end of, you know, mm -hmm. everything about the body. That's anatomy and physiology. Medical terminology, we've got to understand what blood pressure is. We've got to understand what the medical definition of right. a valve or a heart or, you know, we have to understand what those are. Uh, we also have an introduction to health care which is really the kind of class I like to start people with. Uh, it talks about now the HIPAA laws, which are the privacy laws. For very critical. Very critical, exactly. I mean, it can close a hospital, it can close Emory Clark Holder down easily. And, and, and that simply is if someone comes in, I come in to see you and, I, and you know me and I come in with a certain kind of a cancer or whatever and you pick up the telephone and you start calling yes, I, your I church go to, group. Exactly. Example. And usually that's where it happens, honestly. Well, yeah. Where they go to church and somebody says, oh, did you know Perrin Alford came into right. our office right. the other day and did you know right. he has... Right. Yeah, don't say it because everybody in town will think I'll have it. I know. I mean, that's why I didn't say anything. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't want you to. But, um, you know, you wouldn't want that to happen. Right. You know, uh, I, could, I could sue you. could you. sue me personally. Right. You could right. sue me personally as well as sue the institution or wherever I work. Right. 
uh, one of the worst things that happens with HIPAA is nurses in an elevator. You don't know how many times this happens. In a hospital, they get in an elevator and they start talking about one of their patients in room, mm -hmm. you know, 312 right. that has whatever. And somebody in the elevator says, oh, I just visited that room. I didn't know he was that sick or, you know. Oh, Lord. So that happens a lot. Yeah. So that's what introduction to healthcare. That kind of gives you the idea of how not only legally, uh, you know, the, the things that are happening that you need to know. Right. Uh, it also teaches you how to do blood pressures. It, it's right. that kind of course. It's right. just a very basic, this is what healthcare is all about. Okay, kind of I've course. taken all those Keep courses. Taking those. I've done good, I've made good grades. Okay, yeah. what's the next step? You need English, math, and psychology as well, which okay. most of those transfer in if you've already had those before. You have to have 3.0 grade point average to okay. apply, which is a B average. Right. So we want pretty much the cream of the crop here. We, you know. We, as you should. As we should. This is this, medical. Right, this is not. So we want a 3.0 grade point average. This is serious average. stuff. This is serious stuff. Okay. We want a current CPR card. Okay. Which any healthcare provider or any healthcare person should have. Right. Uh, so those are some of the things we want. Uh, and then we accept 15 students into our program. So everybody just didn't get in your program? No, no, everybody just doesn't get in. It's just like uh, practical nursing or the ADM, which is our registered nursing mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is going to get in. Okay. So, you know, that's why I say we take the As cream. As should be. We take the cream right. off the top, right. you know. Uh, then we have another year of classes. Okay. Three semesters of classes, which this is where we get into the nitty gritty. We're going to start talking about human diseases. We're going to start talking about uh, drugs. We're going to get into skills, which some of our skills are not just blood pressure and temperature. We also do EKGs. We also do uh, breathing treatments. Most people will have, a lot of people have respiratory problems. Uh, we draw blood from patients. We do uh, anything the doctor needs. If you need a throat swab done to see if you had strep throat, we can do that. Wow, and this is very interesting because this almost to me, being a non-medical person, <laughs> this almost sounds like a nursing kind of. It is. It's, it's usually, like they're doing a lot of nursing type we do. skills. Uh, you, in fact, usually when you go to your doctor's office, most of the time you will call that person the nurse. Oh, very nurse, can yeah. I get, you know, right. and we're really not nurses per se. We right. are not licensed practical nurses, right. uh, but we we have do the blood same, pressure. We do the blood pressure. Right. We, we actually do more because uh, those medical people don't do EKGs. Right. We actually can do basic uh, x-rays. Wow. Which also most nurses don't do. So we really multitask. Not only though do we do things in the back office as we call it, right. we also do things in the front office. Right. We can answer the telephones. We can make uh, we, we can take your payment and right. make apply it to your account. I was going to say, what about insurance? It sounds to me like this is a person... We do a billing and coding. Yes, right. we have to understand that. Right. So many times, if you go to your doctor's office and you have a problem with your bill, who is the person you usually talk to? The person that called you back right. into that right. room. And sounds like I'm talking to the medical assistant. Exactly. You're talking to the medical assistant. Right. So a lot of our job, we can do really anything. We are multitasking to no limit. <laughs> we can do anything that is inside a doctor's office. Wow. And you know, that's to, it's a great thing to be able to do because it, it's so helpful to the patient. Right. And so, so how long does it take from beginning to end? Beginning to end. We have the prerequisites for one year, then we have one year of my program. So two years? Basically program. two years, yes. <clears throat> um, a lot of people can transfer those other classes in though. Right. So we could make it one year and I have a lot of students that actually do one year because they transfer the classes from uh, other places or from our own college that came and then came back, you know, left and came back. Uh, the last semester I send people out in what, what is considered clinicals and I'll place them in a doctor's office. I try and place everybody near their own home or right. the city they, near the right. city they live in. If it's LaGrange, LaGrange, Noonan, Peachtree City, wherever it may be because I right. do have some as far away as Peachtree City that come to our program which right. is great. So I place them near their home. Now about, uh, and they work for 10 weeks. They don't get paid, but right. they get a grade. Well, that's okay. That's <laughs> called real world, hands on. It's you really know what you're work. getting into. Yes, exactly. So they know what they're exactly getting into. And a lot of times, you know, maybe one out of my 15 might decide, you know, I'm just not so sure I want to. Most of the time it's the doctor, <laughs> to be honest. Right. That, that, you know, the doctor is, is you, know, you don't want them to be your uh, god per se, but right. a lot of times they have the complex of, right. yeah. I own this, I run this, I pay you, right. you do what I say. 
So a lot of times, you know, we, we do stand up to doctors sometimes and say, wait a minute, this person has asthma, you can't give them this medication. Right. Because sometimes the doctor forgets. Yeah. <laughs> you we, know. we suggest you not give this we patient. We suggest, <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. You have to be in a, you know, we, we teach them how I, to do that in a very, you know, without right. saying you can't do that. Right. Which you don't do. So uh, the last semester we do that. We also have a course that semester where we teach them how to do resumes. And we teach them how to, because how to do a lot of the medical paperwork, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these people and a lot of my students have come from a non-medical background. They've worked in plants or factories, and they've lost their jobs, or their job was sent overseas. Mm -hmm. So they've never, you know, they, they don't know even how to make a resume right. sometimes. So you, and this is just on a Rotman, this is anybody who attends West Georgia Tech, all oh, of our sure. programs. Mm -hmm. it, it is a really an intensive team effort. Mm -hmm. it, it's from the minute you walk in the door and the admissions, Start, yes. all through the instructional process, mm -hmm. and then when they're leaving, we have career placement folks, yes, as we well do. as the instructor um, who works yeah. with the student that helps We've, them write yeah. a resume, all exactly. this kind of stuff. So very intensive team kind of concept, because mm -hmm. we really want the student to be and successful. We keep up with our students even up to a year after they leave. Right. We call them you know, what are you doing? How are things going? Uh, has our program, have, has your education helped you? Mm -hmm. We want to know. Right. Because if there's something we need to change, we want to know. Absolutely. You know, 90% um, of the, our students complete our program, which That's is pretty awesome. high. That's awesome. And honestly, they don't really go out in grades so much as they go out and for financial reasons. Right. And so, real quickly, we're about to run out of time. Not Tell us about the money aspect of all this. In the LaGrange area, most of the students leave here with making around $10.29 an hour. However, uh, once you become certified, which we lead you up to the point of being able to take the national certification or the national registration, which is good in all 50 states, mm -hmm. not just Georgia, uh, you can earn up to $2, maybe $3, sometimes 4 or $5, depending on if you want the Atlanta area or the right. LaGrange area. Right. So there's about a 30000 a year, which is not bad. That's very good. You know, I mean, it's livable. It's comfortable. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and, if you you're, have, and if you're unemployed or you're in a yeah, job if you're, you if you're make, Yeah, if you're making minimum wage. Huge increase. $10 an hour even sounds pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. know, and we place 94% of our students after they graduate. Yeah. That's Ninety-four awesome. percent have a job within six months after graduation. That's awesome. So we're pretty proud of that program. Yeah. We're very proud of our program. Well, it, it sounds like a great program. Uh, this morning, we're out of time. time I told you time would go <laughs> by quick. Uh, we could spend lots more time talking mm -hmm. about medical assisting. It's a dynamite program. Uh, there's, it's in a high demand. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Feel so obviously you don't want to spend your time, energy, and effort anywhere in any higher ed if it's leading to nowhere, as an example, my great example always is. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a close friend who has a philosophy degree. Well, there's not a lot of jobs for philosophers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anything in, me in, the, in the medical field is just dynamite. It's wide open, plenty of jobs, plenty of jobs. Yeah. So uh, if you're underemployed, unemployed, hate what you're doing, uh, it's time to make a change. You can start making the change happen in your life fall semester at West Georgia Technical College. Uh, call us 706-845-4323 or go see us on the web www.westgatech.edu. We want to see you. Fall semester starts August 13th. Don't miss it. Thanks for watching Technically Speaking. You've got that ideal career in mind. Well, West Georgia Technical College specializes in preparing you for great careers. Call today and find out how we can help you fit education into your busy lifestyle. You've got that ideal career in mind. Well, West Georgia Technical College specializes in preparing you for great careers. Call today and find out how we can help you fit education into your busy lifestyle. When I heard about the Troop County Works website, I went ahead and registered for the site, even though I had a job at the time. Uh, I found a lot of great resources on the site. Um, however, last May I was laid off and uh, I was looking for a job, so I immediately turned to the Troop County Works website uh, to see if there were any job posts available. Um, I also, I had just missed a resume writing workshop and I was able to submit my resume. There was a professional review done and my, web, my resume really came out looking great.
Um, I used all the online resources that were available on the website. Um, I found a career fit through a job posting on the site and could not be happier with the job I found. I just really wanted to thank Troop County Works, uh, the website, the whole team for helping me and my family find a great career.